Ellen Pompeo from Grey's Anatomy went to town on people who collaborated with Woody Allen. Let's read some of the tweets she put up. I haven't gone through his personal journals, according responding to Hello Giggles. A journalist went through Woody Allen's personal journals and found he was obsessed with teenage girls, to which Ellen responds, uh, I haven't gone through his personal journals and I knew that. Shock the people that work with this man, hashtag ambition is kind. No <laughs> autocorrect, ambition is blind, okay, continuing. Uh, I don't call it a mistake, he married his daughter. People see what they wanna see or don't, kind of hard not to see who this fool is. Uh, and while we're on the subject and I'm fired up, has this fool ever put one person of color in any of his movies ever? Uh, what about Hispanic or Asian actors? Or are Asians only for him to molest? Ooh, Holy shit. shit. You know me when I get started. <laughs> yes, we do, Meredith. Um, uh, I wouldn't know because I don't watch that bougie shit referring to his movies, which she thinks are bougie. Um, and you know what I call that? Ducking predators and chasing trophies. It's weak <laughs> AF. People have this thing separate, separate the professional uh, from the person. Basically saying that you know, I know he's a prof he's bad in his personal life, but he's a professional and I work with him. Thank you. Except I was 100% sober, clear as a bell. People accusing her of being drunk and going on a drunken tirade. That's the tweets. Uh, what do you guys think of this? We're not going to do five words or less. Yeah, I mean, for me, I don't quite understand why Hollywood and actors haven't gone after him the way that they've gone after all the other people that have been ousted so far for you know all these allegations and things that they have done. Um, so I'm I'm glad that there is a celebrity that is willing to do that and say things that people are thinking. Um, but yeah, I'm with her. I don't see how there's people are out there that that see and read all the things that are you know out there about him and continue to be like, oh, well, you know, he's he's great at what he does. So but let's just let's just sweep it under the rug and continue. Uh, Seth Meyers mentioned it something, or I think he mentioned something like that. Or whoever I was watching recently said referred to the movie Manhattan. Mm -hmm. In the film Manhattan, it's Woody Allen dates a child. Like, it was Seth Meyers. They have a long relate, like it's about their relationship. And when the child says she wants to pursue her dream of like doing something else, moving on, he like uses manipulation to keep her in the relationship. Like it is one of those, I am exploring my internal fucked up in this yeah. through film. But people give him a pass because it's like in black and white and a beautiful testament to the character of Manhattan well, as a city. And like, how what? different do we look at that in uh, comparison to Louis C.K.'s movie that got pulled um, right. from Orchard called I Love You Daddy, which also ironically also shot in black and white, also about uh, Louis C.K.'s sort of uh, warped relationship with a young girl. Mm -hmm. um, my five words, which it doesn't really matter, I was just gonna follow Ellen Pompeo on, on Twitter because I didn't <laughs> know when she says in the Twitter, you guys know how I am. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, I, I didn't know no. that she was like this on Twitter. And just for you guys at home, she is. Uh, she holds something back on yeah. Twitter. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a very refreshing. You like it's totally She's amazing. unfiltered. Um, Jason. Over to you. <laughs> uh, I love you, Meredith Gray. Uh, Meredith <laughs> Ellis would be proud. Uh, you know what, fool? She she brings up um, people of color in movies because she has two biracial children with record producer Chris Ivory, who's African American. So um, if you didn't know that about Ellen Pompeo, uh, I think your question was, or the question that people always ask about, why haven't they gone after Woody Allen? Well, I can only speculate and think that Woody Allen has been this legendary director prior to everything that's come out recently, right? And so I think it's also wonderful that you have actresses that aren't afraid to go against the grain because I can only think that there was this unspoken code about Woody Allen in Hollywood. Same thing with Harvey Weinstein. You just don't talk about these people because they're so powerful. But the the brilliance of all this now is that these women who I mean Ellen Pompeo isn't really a big movie star. I mean, she's played a, a Gray, Meredith Grey for 15 years now. So that's pretty much all we're gonna know her as except for her being an old school. That's exactly and what I was but um yeah but the fearlessness yeah. they have now is so like, wow, because they're, they they could care less. My, my career, as Jessica Chastain says, I don't need this career in order to stand up for something that I feel I need to stand up for. I think the reason why Woody Allen has sort of been exempt from this reckoning is because there have been so many misconceptions about the situation that happened with Dylan Farrow um, that were so pervasive that they 
I mean, it's like if you tell a mistruth or a lie enough, it sort of becomes and feels true. And that's very true for myself. And what I thought happened with uh, Dylan and Woody Allen was totally different than after having done my research, really only within the past month or two, mm -hmm. actually happened and the facts that corroborate her story. And that was really swept up. Um, the, I, I even remember my mom telling me when I was uh, maybe like a young teenager, uh, something about this and just saying that Woody Allen and Mia Farrow had this really awful uh, divorce and that Mia was actually, my, my mom, like, she was like, I think that Mia was actually caught brainwashing the kids. And I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, it's crazy. And it's just flat out not true. Mm -hmm. But it be, it became like this truth where we're like, well, we don't really know. He said, she said, and I was guilty of that. I don't know if you guys had that same experience of just mm -hmm. hearing murky truths about the Woody Allen, Dylan Farrow situation. The information is out there. Go do your research. You can find all the resources that you need to figure out what, what went on here um, and to believe and support Dylan Farrow and to hold Woody Allen accountable. Yeah, and it's interesting because the things that came out recently about Woody Allen, as you mentioned, are things that came out a long time ago that only feel fresh because she wrote an article recently about mm -hmm. it saying, hey, by the way, like, we're still here, I'm still here. This is still a thing that's happening in Hollywood. And that's the weird, strange, willful amnesia of Hollywood where it's like, I just forget because no one's reminding me right now. Mm -hmm. it, just, it just ends up happening. Um, I, there are males who have spoken out about their regret about working in, with um, Woody Allen. It includes Griffin Newman, who's in The Tick. He plays like the nerdy sidekick. He donated all of the money that he made from that film to Rain, which is a, you know a domestic like incest and abuse network. Um, and then David Crumholtz, who was from the movie Numbers and the Santa Claus, uh, or from the TV show Numbers and Santa Claus. Uh, these are not the giantest stars. The most recent film made by Woody Allen stars Justin Timberlake and Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet. Um, so people are still continuing to work with Woody Allen. Um, and it's because people want to work with Woody Allen. It's a specific actor. They mm -hmm. can move past uh, Harvey Weinstein because it's not like I want to be in a Weinstein movie. You want to work with the people that Weinstein has created as, like, you know, the Quentin Tarantinos of the world. Right. So who knows?